Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. In part one of this review, I showed you this Happy Model Mobula 7 HD version. In part two, I'll show you how to bind the receiver in D8 mode, the Betaflight setup, and how to change the Cadex camera settings. The Crazy Bee F4 Pro V2 all in one flight controller that's used on here has got a built in receiver. And when you order your quad, you have to order it with the right option. You can have FR Sky transmitter on D8 and D16, and that's non EU. Fly Sky using AF HDS and AF HDS 2A protocol, and there's the DSM2, DSMX version if you're using a Spectrum transmitter. Now, setup should be easy, but I found it was impossible to get this to bind on D16 mode, even though the spec says it supports D8 and D16. And remember, the built-in receiver is non-EU, so if you're using a transmitter that's flashed with EU LBT, then you're going to have to add an external receiver. And I'm thinking of fitting an XM Plus under here anyway. Before you bind in D8, you'll need to change the receiver protocol in Betaflight. Just connect this to your computer and fire up the Betaflight configurator. Okay, let's get this connected. There we go, that's all working great. Now, the default protocol for this board, if we look in here, and this is straight out of the box, is FR Sky X, and that is the protocol that you'll need for D16. You'll need to change this to FR Sky D to get it to bind in D8 mode. Okay, we just need to save that and reboot. Now, one of the great improvements with this flight controller is you don't need to press the bind button down here while you're applying power, and that's always been a real fiddle. You just need to power the quad on using USB or battery. Like this. And the LEDs will start flashing. All you need to do now is press the bind button. Don't get confused with the boot button. Press it and hold it. And the LEDs will stop flashing and that indicates that it's in bind mode. So if we now turn our transmitter on. Welcome to OpenTX. And I've already got my model set up here. If you go to page one, go up to bind. I'm in D8 mode here. And if we press the bind button, These LEDs have started flashing now, which indicates this has successfully bound. So we can stop that. We can power cycle everything, so we can just unplug that. Telemetry lost. Plug it back in. Telemetry recovered. And these are now on solid, which shows us that this has successfully bound in D8 mode. All pretty straightforward. To get the Canex camera set up, you need to use the OSD on the camera. And you'll find a flying lead tucked under here, and you'll need to get the OSD joystick that's in the Mobula 7 box and connect it up. And of course, we'll power on the quad so that the camera's got power. Now, all you need to do to activate the OSD is press the joystick button. And here we can see the settings. These seem to work best for me. First, we've got the OSD settings, and you can put a name in there if you want. And I've got the voltage and timers turned off. Video, I've got set at 1080p, 60 frames a second. Video looping's off, and I've got auto recording turn on. So it starts recording as soon as the power's turned on and the battery's connected. It's too easy to forget to press the record button. 
wide dynamic range is on, save and exit. Camera settings, exposure I've set to ED minus 0.3, which gives a nice punchy image. One thing you need to be careful of with a CADEX is if you wind up saturation and sharpness, the image looks too artificial and you get the edges starting to ring. Metering is multi-mode, field of view is high, light frequency is 50 hertz because we're in the UK. Image effect, saturation I've got set to seven, sharpness I've dialed right down to one. Contrast and brightness are both left at 5, which is the default setting. TV system, NTSC, I'll leave it at that, doesn't matter because my goggles change automatically. System settings, and we can format the SD card if we want to, change languages and so on. Don't need to do any of that. I'm using Dominator V3s, which are 16x9, so I'll leave it on that, but you can change it to 4x3 if you want to and I found these to be the best settings for me. Now, one thing to watch for, the SD slot is in here, and the card may jump out on hard landing. So I put a piece of tape across here so I don't lose my card, just in case. Now, I'm pretty happy with this. On 2S and 3S, with a gentle throttle finger, you'll get awesome acro footage that's ready to put on YouTube. It's not quite ready for full-blown high speed just yet, but I suspect an update will be on the way because I've seen some other similar quads using a simple carbon bottom plate. And the component spec and build quality is excellent and it gets a solid eight out of 10 from me. There's a few upgrades I've got planned. The built-in receiver seems to fail safe randomly. It may be a fault on the board, but I'm not comfortable with it. So I'll get an FR Sky XM Plus receiver squeezed in just underneath the flight controller board. And this means I can bind it to an EU LBT transmitter and it'll have much better range. I also want to get a buzzer fitted so I can find it easily in long grass and so on. Thanks for watching. And if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first visit, then subscribe to the channel for updates. I'll see you next time.